I'm Taylor and I have been traveling for the last year. Most of that time was spent in New Zealand, as you can see, wearing my New Zealand shirt in honor. And I spent most of that time on the South Island. So today I'm going to review the top five places that are a must see on the South Island. So number one, Mount Cook National Park. I'm a sucker for national parks anyway, but Mount Cook is hands down one of my favorites in the world. You take this really long road for like 30 minutes, there's nothing along the way. You get to the point where you start thinking, am I going in the right direction? Am I going to get anywhere at the end of this? And you do. You come upon this little village and there's mostly accommodation and a few restaurants and then there's just a background of these mad majestic mountains, including Mount Cook, which was where Sir Edmund Hillary first started practicing. Well, I don't know if he first started doing it, but he spent a lot of time there before he actually climbed Mount Everest. So there's a long, long history. You can learn about the history at the Hermitage Hotel at the Sir Edmund Hillary Museum. But also, if you don't want to spend all your time indoors, which you shouldn't because you're in a beautiful national park, there's plethora of hikes to do. The Hooker Valley track was my favorite. I did it a couple of times. Once before the snowstorm, once after the snowstorm while I was there, and it just made everything covered in white and it was magical and beautiful. And Mount Cook is also part of the International Dark Sky Reserve, which means at night it does get really, really dark, but that means you can see the stars and it is just absolutely breathtaking and awe-inspiring. And so if you have the chance, you do actually have to have a car to get to Mount Cook, but I highly recommend making it a stop on your tour. Now, my second musty place in New Zealand is Wanaka and Queenstown. So I'm kind of cheating a little bit. Those are two different places. Um, they're not too far apart, so if you have the chance, you could do both of them. If you just have an option to do one, I say just pick one of the two. You'll get kind of similar experiences from both of them. But if you want to do both, also really great options. There are different things to do. So Queenstown, the way I describe it, is sort of the Aspen of Colorado. It's, it's small, it's mountainous, it's a little bit more on the expensive side, and it's absolutely breathtaking. Wanaka, on the other hand, again, is not that far away. It also has mountains and water activities, just as Queenstown does, access to ski fields, and it's a little bit more where the locals like to hang out because they get tired of all the tourists at Queenstown. So if you do make it to Queenstown, there are a lot, I mean, in New Zealand in general, there's just a lot of hikes to do. So Queenstown hiking, there is a lake right in the middle, so you can go kayaking. They have all sorts of water sports. Depending on whether or not it's summer or winter will determine what you want to do but you can also quickly get to the ski fields from Queenstown. They do, they run day shuttles from town. There's lots of places to rent ski gear. I also went to a yoga studio in Queenstown and it was on like the second floor of this building. And I happened to go near sunset. So then I did yoga while the sun is setting overlooking the lake and the mountains. I mean, it's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful destination that if you have a couple of days, I'd say make it down to Queenstown. On the other hand, if you decide to go to Wanaka, there is still plenty to do. Again, you have your water sports, you have your hiking, you have your shuttles to the ski fields. Um, absolutely, one of my absolute favorite hikes I've ever done was Roy's Peak, and that was in Wanaka. It's Definitely one of the more Instagrammable places that you can go, um, as you can see by my photo. But, and it's actually really challenging. It's a really challenging hike. I got about, uh, I think, two and a half or three hours into it and started thinking like, mm, do I really need to go all the way to the top? Like, I've kind of seen it. It's, it's nice. I'm kind of ready to turn around. It was a really hot day, but I'm so glad that I kept going. Otherwise, I would not have gotten that photo or that view and just the experience that came with that. And fun fact, that's actually the false summit. There was about 30 minutes more to go up to the top, but most people just stop right there and take their photos and turn back around because it was about a four and a half, five hour hike. So you do need to be in good shape for it, but it's a, uh, it's a good one to do if you do make it to Wanaka. 
The other really famous thing to do in Wanaka is to go see the Wanaka tree. It's cool. It's not that exciting though. It'll probably take you about 15 minutes. It's literally right in the center of town. There's the lake, Lake Wanaka right there. You just park, you walk over the tree, you take your picture, check it out, and then you head out. So I would not make a side trip to Wanaka just to see the tree unless you want to do some other things in the city. But of course, you know, that is one of the things that you can do. The other really fun thing that you can do on your way into either of these locations is just to visit the Central Otago Vineyards. So they're, New Zealand's mostly known for their vineyards up in the Marlborough region, and there's also some on the North Island, but the ones in Central Otago are really special, they're unique, they grow a certain type of grape, and they were so much fun. So I definitely recommend um, hitting and maybe even doing a little wine tour around the Central Otago Vineyards. My third messy location in New Zealand South Island is Fiordland National Park. So I mentioned Mount Cook at the top. Now we're going to talk about Fiordland, which is all the way down at the bottom of the South Island. And it is, I, like, I swear I was in Jurassic Park. Like, it was just a completely different experience to sort of the, the mountainous and, and vastness of Mount Cook. Fiordland is, has a lot more trees and green, and um, it kind of feels a little bit more enclosed. It's just two completely different experiences. Now, if you don't have a lot of time, that's fine. You can get through Fiordland, you know, on a quick zip around. Um, I do recommend doing the Milford Sound tour. You're going to hear a lot about it. If you go to New Zealand, everyone talks about Milford Sound, Milford Sound. Um, it's actually really pretty cool. I've done it twice now, once in the winter, once in the summer, and I've seen both experiences. I've even talked to other people who've had cooler experiences than I have. They saw some dolphins uh, swimming around on their tour, so it just depends on the day that you go. But you basically, you jump on a tour boat, that's the only way to see it, you jump on a tour boat and they take you around the sound, which and is not actually a sound, but they take you around and it's about two and a half or three hours. It's a really nice day, you can get food and drinks and alcohol on the boat, so you just enjoy your boat ride and the the beautiful scenery. The other thing you can do in Fiordland other than going to Milford or going for hikes is you can actually see some glowworms. So if you don't have time to make it to the North Island and the South Island, that's okay. You can still see your glowworms. You also get a boat ride with the glowworm tour. So you can hit up, you know, quite a few little boat rides in the National Park on top of doing your hiking. Place number four that I think you should visit on the South Island is the West Coast. It is where it says it is. It's just right along the West Coast of the South Island. Now, admittedly, I did not spend a lot of time here. I ended up spending extra time in Mount Cook and in Wanaka and didn't really leave myself too much time for the West Coast, so I kind of zipped through it, but I really wish I would have had more time there because it was so completely different from anything else I had seen on the South Island or to the or the North Island for that matter. So my top uh, activity suggestions for the West Coast would be the Punakaki Pancake Rocks. Don't know if I said that right. There are a lot of things in New Zealand that I just do not pronounce right. I apologize. But the Pancake Rocks and Blowholes is a natural feature along the West Coast. They're so named because the rocks that were formed over thousands and thousands of years are so thin and stacked on top of each other that they look like pancakes. Um, it's actually a pretty, really easy loop. It's only, I mean, I ended up stopping and, and watching and we ended up seeing a pod of dolphins jumping and swimming, so we hung out for a little bit. Um, but it's a really easy path. There's nothing strenuous about it, and it's just a little loop. And then once you finish the loop, you can go hang out at the Pancake House and have your coffee. Also in near Greymouth, which is one of the cities, you can tour the Monteith's Brewery. So if you are like me, and you'd like to drink local wherever you are going, and you like brewery tours, um, Monteith's is one of the original New Zealand breweries, and that is the original location. So you're getting some history in with a cool cultural experience. So. I definitely recommend to check out, if you're of age, the Monteith Brewery. My fifth location that's a must-see in New Zealand South Island is Kaikoura. 
So this was probably the biggest surprise for me. I was just stopping over one night on my way from Christchurch to Picton to catch the ferry up to Wellington. And it was just sort of a, a middle stop. I was asking all my friends, it's like, what am I gonna do there? What's what's cool about Kai Kor? And everybody was like, I don't know. I was like, okay, cool. So, you know, it's one night, no big deal. Um, Kai Kor ended up being one of my favorite places that I had stopped in all of New Zealand. I couldn't believe that I had gotten such little advice before I went. If you didn't catch where it's located, it's actually on the north eastern part of the South Island between Christchurch and Picton where you do catch the ferry. And Kaikoura is known for their marine life. It is one of the few places in the whole world where you can see year-round whales, dolphins, seals. I mean, if you love marine life or just want to have some of these experiences, like it's one lifetime experience, Kaikoura is the place to go. So the first time I, w I went there, the weather wasn't great. It was kind of sunny, but it was really windy, and so the waters were really choppy. Um, so I had tried swimming with dolphins. It didn't work out. The weather was too bad. So I just went and hung out at the seal colony. You can just park in the parking lot, um, or you can even walk from town, but just get to like the parking area and then walk around. And there's just all these seals, and they just hang out and they don't mind if you're around. Like, obviously be careful, they are wild animals, you don't wanna to get too close, but I just, I could not believe the number, the like the sheer number of seals that were just out sunbathing and didn't really mind having humans just sort of walking around observing them. So that is one thing to do there. The second thing is, like I mentioned, swimming with dolphins. So it didn't work out the first time, so the second time, actually I made a separate trip to go back to specifically go swimming with dolphins which was a bucket list item of mine. And I I mean, yeah, <laughs> there was like a pod of 200 dolphins. So every time we got in the water, I mean, they were just everywhere around you. And I could not believe that this was happening. So if it's on your bucket list item to swim with dolphins or to go whale watching, Kaikor is the place to be in New Zealand. Thanks for sticking with me. Just for fun, I want to throw in a couple of honorable mentions of some of my other favorite places in New Zealand that if you happen to be going by, they're worth a stop, but I wouldn't go out of my way to see them. So the first one is Lake Matheson, or it's also known as the Mirror Lake in New Zealand. So it's outside of Franz Josef National Park, which is about a four hour drive from Wanaka. So it's not super close, but if you're heading up to the West Coast anyway, eh, you might as well stop there. Um, the You get to actually see the other side of Mount Cook from the Mount Cook National Park, which is pretty cool. And if you go early in the morning when the lake is really still, you can see a perfect reflection of Mount Cook onto the lake. And it's just, it's a really um, beautiful location on the South Island. And the walk itself is also pretty easy. It's not too strenuous. It's a pretty, pretty uh, flat path. So if you're around and you're kind of looking for something quick and easy to do, definitely Lake Matheson. The second honorable mention is Castle Hill, which is um, part of Arthur's Pass. If you're going from Greymouth to Christchurch or vice versa, you're going to go through Arthur's Pass. Definitely check the time of year and the weather. So the pass can get pretty bad weather up there. But if it's nice and clear, I definitely recommend stopping at Castle Hill, which the Dalai Lama once called the spiritual center of the universe. So it is a nice and very serene, calm place. There's boulders everywhere. You don't really know how they got there. It's just a really cool place. It's also another really good um, stop to take to walk around and get some exercise take a break from driving. That's it. Those are my top five, five must-see places on the New Zealand South Island. Thanks for sticking with me, you guys. And if you want any more New Zealand tips, just let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.